You'll notice I have a straight in shot here, getting ready to go. And the chalk is your friend. And when I talk about chalking, you know, a lot of people have been playing for years and they don't know how to chalk the tip like you. <laughs> Watch, uh, you know, the proper way, and you'll notice the tip on my cue is rounded, almost like a nickel or a dime. And this is something I can help you with as we progress in the class, because it's really important. What do you think is the most important part of your cue? Tip. The tip, absolutely. And also you want good weight and balance and, you know, based on your height and so forth. My cue is a little bit longer because I'm, I'm, I'm a, a aficionado of the long, of the nine foot tables. When you get on a smaller table, it's not so important. But you'll notice the tip on my cue is about the shape of a nickel on top with a nice sharp edge. But you'll watch professional players, they'll chalk the cue almost for every shot. And you notice they hold the, the chalk at about a 45 degree angle like that. And just, you don't grind it in too tightly, otherwise it just falls off. But actually manicuring your tip is like manicuring your nails on your body, because you want to make sure it's manicured. And when I say that, I mean a lot of people have what's called uh, a tip tapper or a a rasp or whatever it might be, so you can actually get your tip ready to accept the chalk. If your tip gets too slick, the chalk will just fall right off. And I'll show you those uh, as, we, as we progress. But a straight in shot like this, you'll notice I'm standing pretty far away from the ball. Now a lot of people might be too close, I call them table huggers. Now you'll notice from this position, when I look at the 11 ball, the pocket in the corner pocket, uh, I'm not quite seeing it in, in the best perspective. But if I step back a little bit here, wow, I can see the entire shot. In fact, that's one of the most important things about a good pre-shot routine, is getting your head and your eyes in the proper position. Because that'll dictate, when you take your stance, whether or not you're going to be on the, on the correct line. And that's what we're going to work on today. I'm going to give you some drills to do that. Um, before we go any farther, um, I want to say this is an interactive class, okay? Jump in, ask questions anytime you want. I don't care what I'm doing. And as I go around, you know, Chuck and I give, give individualized instruction afterwards, you know, feel free to ask about anything. Because I know some of you are going to be more advanced than some of you and that's fine. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's go around the room and uh, just let us know your name. And you know, I, I, I'll try to do my best for your, your names. But we'll start over here. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. And anything uh, about you want to learn in this class, or uh, banking? Banking. That'll be about class number five, okay? <laughs> All right, what's your weakest part of your game? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, Logan? Uh, Logan Roberts. Um, yeah. I've been a couple of weeks here. Yeah. I've got a tournament on Sundays here. Oh, yeah. Um, just some of the back to basic stuff. And All right. It's so long and stuck in bad habits. All right. Uh, my long straight shots for some reason are All right. not great with. Well, you know, getting what he just said is a really good uh, thing to think about. You know, if you can just master hitting long straight shots, that's going to really laser in your strokes. So you can make a lot more shots. Okay. You know, when I practice for a tournament or a league. That's what I'll do. I'll shoot like 10 long straight in stop shots. And then I'll do some with follow and some with draw. And that really gets me, uh, you know, my confidence up and I'm ready to play. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Doug Ashley. Uh, I've been playing this game since I was a kid, but never competitive. Recently just joined leagues. And just want to be more consistent play, you know? Just All be right. more consistent. All right, sounds good, Doug. All right, Doug, <laughs> Logan. Chad, <laughs> go ahead. I'm Stephanie. I'm like beginner. 
and I'm fascinated by watching everybody play and I try to play and I've had some people kind of show me some things and I'm starting to get it and so I'm even more excited like oh I'm, I'm understanding so now I'm excited but I'm not good enough to hold my own at the bar so I don't really ever get a turn or get to get any time in on a table so yeah. this is Stephanie, perfect. Stephanie would you like to play in a league someday or, or tournament or just, Maybe. Right now, you're just. I'm just of, really excited and fascinated right. by the game, so all right. just want to learn it. Well, welcome. All right. See, that's like the little lady that I started training four years ago. She's totally hooked on it. You probably see her around, Penny Wise. Oh, Penny. Oh yeah, crazy. added her online. Someone oh, tagged, you know Penny? No, somebody tagged tagged me because I had post. That's how I found out the class. I posted something somewhere on Facebook, and someone said. Join this group, add Penny, go to this class. So I just started. Yeah. I added her, but I haven't ever talked to her or anything. Yeah. Right. My name's Cliff, and in spite of Peter's best efforts, I still miss. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as I think I've got it down, the next day I can miss every show. You know, some wag once said that consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. Well, if that's true, then if you want to be a pool shooter, you have to have a small mind. <laughs> and um, to me, that I guess that means not get caught up in all the checkpoints and have to do's and all that, and just shoot more intuitively. But so far, I'm not there. All right, well, you get there. You're working hard. You know, a lot of people ask people. You know, how do you become a good pool player? And Cliff's got that quality. He has a passion. He loves this game. He wants to master it. He's taking classes, he's watching YouTube, he's doing all the things he can do. And the one thing about becoming a good pool player, you really need to have an open mind, too. All right? And when I say that, you know, a lot of us come into the game with bad habits and things. So you have to be, you have a willingness to kind of overcome some of your areas of weakness. And that means practicing, maybe making alter alterations to the game and things like that. Welcome, Cliff. Hi, my name's Joe. I uh, used to play a lot. I yeah. took some time. I always wanted to play in the league and put some uh, friends out here that played. And they got more as a uh, substitute. And I just need to uh, polish up my game. I used to be okay. And I want to be better. Good. My rails uh, probably What was that last Rails. Thing? Oh, okay. Well, one of the things that we'll learn in probably class five and six is when you get hooked. And everybody knows what that means when you get hooked. You know, there are a lot of really accurate kicking systems. But the one thing you have to deal with as far as banking and kicking, and a kick is like this, just so you know. If you're going into the rail like that, that's called a kick. This is a bank when you hit the object ball in your pocket off the rail. But a lot of the systems and things that you'll learn for banking and picking is going to be relative to the equipment. Like the bar table is going to be a lot different than that, plus the humidity, the clock, the type of rails. So that's one of the things that pocket billiards really requires you need to adapt. And I'm sure playing in the bars, you need more than that because sometimes the Tables are cockeyed, they like blow off, and things like that. Next. Hey, my name's Dan, and yeah. uh, I played pool off and on for a long time, but I've never been taught how to play. Oh, okay. I'm just looking for. You don't have any bad habits, though, do you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, all my habits. <laughs> well, welcome. Yeah. Uh, my name's Gordon, and I'm a pool novice, student here for a few right. now. So, up as, uh, how, how did you hear about the class? Uh, I came over when there was something wrong. Oh! I said over here, and I saw you flyer, and I saw you. Okay, cool. Well, welcome. Look forward to your time. All right. So my name is Tom. I've been teaching for a lot uh, since I was young. And um, now that I'm older, uh, I used to be able to draw the ball follow them all. I can't do it right now. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of uh, frustrating. But it was just natural to me before. Now, I'm 
That's just one of many things. Well, where, where, where do you play? Pardon? Where do you play? Do you play at, uh, at home or? Yeah, I uh, I got I got a run foot surgery. Oh, excellent! Nine foot table. No, it's it's the eight small. The house. What size is down the hole? <laughs> yeah, the house is not the large enough to be nine foot. No, but uh, yeah, and, you know, we have uh, we have a clubhouse and a supposedly a pool club. And, excellent. Uh, and yeah. Play, you know, but, uh, but yeah, mostly. Uh, I get that one I used to have. And your first name is Tom. Tom. Yes. Welcome, Tom. Yeah, I think Kathy and I'm here to get rid of some of the bad okay. We'll see if they go away. Well, Kathy's made a lot of progress. I, she's taken several classes and I've seen her. Well, but you probably don't get a lot of time to practice it. You're too busy playing tennis. Right? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. Give an honor playing together. <laughs> All right. All right, Chuck. Yeah, my name's Chuck Wiggins. I just love to play pool. I'm taking beach classes for tons of time. Well, well, not anymore in all the leagues. I had to cut back. It got too expensive. <laughs> and then I got a little mad at the league. <laughs> Everybody got their problems. Today, the mantra is to stroke the cue ball exactly where you need. All right. <laughs> now, this, we're going to start off pretty basic, but as I said before, as I go around giving individual lessons, I'll, I'll kind of adapt to your levels and abilities. Okay? But I do want to get a few of the basics down in the first class. And give you a few drills to practice. Now, uh, you know, I've talked a little bit earlier about the three shot routine, and when I'm pocketing a straight in ball, we're going to talk about cut shots as well. But I've set up on every table basically a basic straight in shot. Now, you'll notice that uh, your head position while you're standing up above the shot is real important. Now, if I'm looking down the line of the straight in shot, and I see the contact point, the pocket the ball, that's what I'm looking at, I need to make sure that my head and eyes are right on that contact point. Now, one thing you'll notice if I move my head this way a half an inch, it looks off. If I move my head a half an inch this way, it gets off. In other words, I want you to learn to trust your eyes when you're standing up above the shot. And Logan, this will help you, because I notice you maybe get down a little too fast sometimes on your, without. See, all the hard work and pocket billiards is done while you're standing up above the shot. Now, the reason why I say that is so important, because once you find the target on the object ball, from a standing position with a reasonable distance from the ball. In fact, you'll notice that when I do it, I actually use my cue, all right? My cue is like a crosshair on the telescopic side of the rifle. So as I'm in this standing position, I'm getting ready to take my stance. But before I do that, you know, this is the mental side of the game. You should visualize what, what's going to happen. In other words, I'm visualizing the 11 ball going in the corner pocket and the cue ball stopping. Because your body will respond to what you see. It's not thinking so much that I'm going to make the shot. It's visualizing. And that's a little bit different. That's the psychological part of it. But you'll notice if my eyes are right on that target, my body is probably about a 45 degree angle. But once I see the target line, I'm actually using my cue, and I hold it up in the air like this as, a, as an alignment tool. But the correct alignment will require me to take one step forward into the shot, swing down, while keeping my eye on that target. In other words, I got down in this shot, and I feel pretty confident. But a lot of you, one of the things, one of the things you're going to find when you 
take your stance, you're going to go. Be up above the shot, see the target, left foot forward, and you're going to be off one way or the other. Now, that's okay, but you don't want to just move your body around when you get down. You want to learn how to take your stance on the line of the target without having to adjust when you get down. In other words, I practice this. I've been playing for 55 or 60 years, and I still do this. I'll stand up above my shots, swing my left foot towards the target, swing down, and I want to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. And today we're going to talk about some bridges and things, because I know some of you are beginners and will work on that as well. But the first drill that I want you to think about is just literally standing up above the straight in shot, seeing the line, left foot forward, swing down. And I want you to keep doing that until you can put the cue right on that line every time. So your cue tip is in the center of the cue ball right on the target. And you notice how simple it is. If my body is at an angle and my head position is correct and I take a step forward of my left foot, the cue is going to fall right into the target line. And the more, more uh, uh, you can practice that and do that, you're going to find that when you get down on the shot, you won't have to do all these adjustments. Because if I get down off line like this and I have to do this, move my shoulders and arms, that'll throw everything off. So I want you to learn from drill number one, left foot forward, swing down, perfectly aligned with the target. Let's see it. And you notice when I shot that shot, I stayed down until you hear the ball hit the back of the pot. That's real important. In class number two, we're going to talk about stroke. And today, I want to make sure you have good alignment. And I'm going to watch you all, you know, do your pre-shot routine and make these straight in shots when I go around. And maybe I can diagnose maybe some of the areas that we need to know. And especially with the as well. Yeah, here's the new one. Well, that's coming. That's coming. Let me get those odds in there fast. Center pocket. Yeah. Here's another. Uh, here. Can I spare no expense today? Everybody gets a coffee stir, okay? And I know Cliff remembers these. And you might think, uh, you'll see there's, on these coffee stirs, there's a red line in the middle, okay? Well, the reason why I use these to teach pool is because a lot of people, especially beginners, don't know where the center of the pocket is. In Logan, when I learned this about 25 years ago, my game went up a whole ball because I just realized, you know, that I wasn't aiming properly where the true pocket is. Now, let me explain what I mean. On this shot that I'm shooting right here, the 14 ball, I'm aiming right at that red line. And my contact point is right here. But what happens if I'm shooting from this angle? In other words, that's my aim from a straight end shot. But I'm when shooting over here, Look at where it is. In other words, the center of the outer jaw is aiming way over to that side of your pocket. In other words, on every shot that you shoot, no matter what angle, there's a good side and a bad side. Okay? Now, this 14 ball, which side would be the professional side and the amateur side? In your opinion. What would be the good side of the pocket to hit it at here? Go ahead. Why? Why Cliff? Because you're hitting toward the center of the uh, yeah. pocket. All right, when the 14 ball hits here, off there it goes right in the pocket, doesn't it? If the 14 hits before the pocket and hits here, it's going to wobble up and hang up, isn't it? So it's crucially important important in pool to know where the center of the pockets are. And they're always the center of the outer jaw. Now if I'm shooting from this angle, 
look at what part of the pocket crosses the center of the outer jaw, way over to this side now. So which side on the eight ball on this shot is the professional and which is the amateur side? That's the amateur, this is the professional side. And the reason that is, is when the eight hits here, it's going to go right in. But if it hits here early, it's going to wobble and hang up. So just knowing where the pockets are is kind of a big deal. Now, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference on this shot, but, you know, anytime you have a shot like this, and like I've seen in the league, this shot this over and over and over again. Now, it would be on the eight ball, and they'll hit a little bit to this side of the pocket, and they'll hang up, and they'll lose the game. Look where the center of the pocket really is. It's the center of the outer jaw, way out there. <coughs> so actually, that's where I want to aim. So I get back behind the eight ball, come back over here, I see where my contact point is, swing down, and you notice I actually overcut that a little bit, okay? And the reason why I did that is I wanted to make sure that I hit the good side of the pot, all right? And that's real important. All right, uh, let's get back to the pre-shot routine and lining up and so forth. Now, when you're preparing to shoot a straight-in shot, let me just kind of review a few of the qualities and important considerations. Now, you'll notice I keep my eyes on the target of the nine ball. And if I move my head to either side, I'm going to be off and things look awkward. And I encourage you, when you do these drills, I want you to think about that. Because if you're, if you're lined up properly while you're standing up above the shot, and you keep your eye on all the way down into the stance, you're more likely to be perfectly aligned when you get down. When you're doing drill number one, I just want you to practice getting up and down until you can get down in the shot perfectly every time. And you'll notice how the cue is falling into the line that I'm keeping my eye on. And you want to have enough clearance so you're, you're, you, can, uh, you don't push against your body. Okay, that's real important. And generally, your chin, your nose, the center of your bridge of your nose, and your eyes are directly over the two ball, the target line. Left foot forward, swing down. And when you're shooting these straight in shots, I want you to notice, is it bouncing to the left? Is it bouncing to the right? Which side of the pocket are you missing on? Because I want, I want you to kind of laser in your stroke. And like I say, when you're practicing for a tournament or a league or whatever, you just want to learn the game better, these long straight in shots are really important. And we're going to talk a little bit about cuts today as well. Any questions so far? Okay. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So when you're setting up, you first sight in where the ball is going to, where the object ball is going to go into the pocket. Right. And then you mark mentally mark that point on the object ball. Exactly. And then line up the cue ball for that point on the object ball. Are you, constant, are you kids going back and forth as you're setting up, looking at the original line? That's again? a good question. Now, when I take my stance, I already see my target on the 14 ball. But when I take my stance left foot forward and swing down, my eyes go back to the cue ball because guess what? you got to make sure to hit the center of the cue ball. But, so your eyes are actually going back and forth. But you never go back to this line again. You just are focused on the cue ball and the object ball. Right. right, yeah. In other words, I'm seeing the, where I need to hit the 14 ball while I'm standing up above the shot. Remember, all the hard work's done up here. Because okay. if you get down improperly and you're lined incorrectly, it doesn't matter how, how good you stroke it, you're going to miss balls that way. 
that's why I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the pre-shot routine, seeing the shot, drawing a line all the way back, making sure my eyes are on the target. And I, you can tell immediately just by moving one way or the other if you're off. Left foot forward towards the target, swing down. And you'll notice I'll be doing some warm-up strokes, and we'll talk more about that. But generally, you just want to learn to get down on the shot. And you notice how the cue ball is not wavering. You know, I've been playing for like 60 years, so you know, to me, a lot of this stuff is automatic. But when you're learning a new skill, you actually have to think about it a little more. And I wanted to point out there's a learning curve. When you're learning something new, guess what? You go down a little bit, but then when you, it becomes automatic, it becomes a part of your game, then you start getting a lot better. Maybe Cliff, I'm waiting for that. Knows that <laughs> All right, here's another fun little thing you can do. This is if you really want a, a nice little challenge. One of the things that you notice when you watch people play, and this is probably one of the biggest faults, in fact, I have to admit that I do this sometimes. When I feel insecure over a shot, I'll kind of lift up before I finish my stroke, okay? And everybody knows you've got to keep your head down, right? Just like in golf or any other sport. But this will cure that. Just put two balls and a stick over it, go through my entire pre-shot routine, see my target, use my cue, eyes in the proper position, left foot forward, swing down. Now on this shot, I want you to get used to making this shot, but not knocking the balls over or the stick. Let me make it a little bit harder. I think I got it too easy there. Yeah, more like that. Yeah, that's better. All right. Swing down. And this will teach you to stay down on the shot. Nice and smooth. Oh, I touched the ball. <laughs> I don't know. You know, try to get your stroke lasered in so you're going straight through. And one of the things that you'll see when you're doing these you don't want to guide the cue through, okay? You want the cue to release naturally. In other words, that's why it's so important the way you hold the cue. In other words, uh, probably the best way to describe it, uh, Willie Moscone described it this way, it's like holding a paper cup in your hand. That's how loose you hold the cue. And why is that the case? You'll see my grip on the cue is just my thumb and first two fingers gently. In fact, the word I like to use for holding the cue is cradling the cue. Because the more you cradle the cue, the smoother your stroke. And it also keeps the cue stick level, doesn't it? As I go back, you'll see the wrist hinge, and I go all the way through like that. It allows you to have more follow through and so forth. But if you grip it too tight, it's kind of like sawing wood going up and down, isn't it? So you want a nice, loose grip. It starts from up here, nice, loose grip. Left foot forward, swing down. I got up. I didn't get on that one correctly. This time we'll see if I can do it better. There we go. Now. That was much better. And you'll notice when you're doing this that sometimes your cue will go that way or go that way. Bump the ball this way, bump the ball that way. And you'll you'll kind of realize that you know where your flaws are or your imperfections in your stroke. I see you're using a, a heavier speed on that. Um, Let's no particular um, reason. The only reason I hit it firmer is because I wanted to stop the ball. All right, a couple of things on the bridges. Open bridge is fine. There's nothing wrong with an open bridge. Now, what is an open bridge? A lot of people, when they bridge the cue, They'll just use their first knuckle and their thumb like this. In fact, all the great snooker players in the world play with an open bridge. In fact, 
fact, a lot of them say that putting your finger over the top is structured vision. But either way is fine, whatever works for you. But an open bridge is simply making sure the meat of your hand and your fingers are spread like this. Because a lot of times you want to hit the cue ball high and just kind of scrunch up your hand like this. Sometimes you want to hit it low. In other words, when you hit it lower, you'll be, you know, putting backspin. You're hitting higher, you're putting follow, forward spin. And one of the things you probably noticed already is very rarely you see good players elevate the cue. All right? That's one of the biggest problems with, with uh, novices and beginners at pool. You want to elevate like this. And guess what? If I get the cue elevated, I can't see the target as well, can I? If I have a more level cue, see how much better perspective I have? And it doesn't have to be perfectly level, but generally, you know, level. What if you have a ball in front of the cue ball? No, oh, like I this? Mean, yes. That's it. Well, then you have to jack up. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is a good, good, good teaching point because a lot of people jack up too much. I just want you to pay attention, you know, the proper way to elevate over an object ball. Like in this shot, I'm going to imagine the 10 ball's not even there, okay? Not there at all. I'm going to aim the shot just as though the 10 ball is not there. Swing down, get in this position. But in, when I get it perfectly aligned like this, then I elevate. And I only elevate enough to get over the 10 ball. Too many people do it like this, which is a problem. They'll get up way up like this to try to get over a ball instead of here where I can see it perfectly. And when they get up too high like this, guess what? You can't see where you're hitting. Because your head's up too high and you can't really see if you're able to make the shot. So you only want to get slightly above the tip like this, just a little bit. Let's try one more like this. That one's pretty tight. And you'll notice on all these shots, I'm taking warm up strokes. And you notice they aren't real hot, you know, fast, you know, but the reason why you want to do the warm-up strokes like that, and that's something you'll adapt to your game, is to kind of rehearse the shot. In other words, it's making sure that you're on the, on the target. It's your last chance to maybe, you know, figure out, well, it doesn't look right, so I'm going to stand up and start my pre-shot routine over again. So I get down, that foot forward. And I feel real confident I'm on the line here. Some people actually use Coke bottles and things like that to make sure their stroke is straight. Things like that. You do that on the kitchen table. Yeah. Here's a, yeah, that's good too. And here's another way. You can practice your stroke on the rail like this to make sure you're going straight through. Because a lot of times you're going to see your bow like that or like that. And again, it has to do a lot with the grip. The tighter the grip, the less likely you are to have a nice, true stroke going through the ball. Okay, any questions so far? We've got a few drills we can do. Now, one of the things I like to incorporate in my class is, you know, some game money shots at the end of each lesson. And I think that's real important. But today, how many of you is your main game eight ball? Is eight ball the main game you like to play? All right, let's take uh, three solids and an eight ball.
Who hasn't got the handout yet? Make sure it's got it. And you don't have to look at this right now, but uh, it's going to cover all the things that we've been talking about so far. Got one? Okay. <laughs> all right. But I'm going to give you all a chance to participate in this. I'm just going to throw randomly the balls on the table with no particular. to do from here is uh, uh, now the new rules of pool and that most of you are familiar with now is ball in hand when somebody follows. Okay. Now let's just imagine that your opponent has scratched. They made their object ball the last strike and scratched. All right, you have ball in hand now. Now the question is where would you put the cue ball now? If you wanted to win this game of baseball, in fact, we don't we don't need that many balls. Take three is enough. Now, where would you put the cue ball in this case to hopefully win the game? You shoot the five first, okay? Any particular reason? Okay. Now, wouldn't it be easier to make the five first and then the three? Think about how hard it would be to go from the three to the five. And that's absolutely correct. Now, if I wanted to get the cue ball in a position where I could make the three, where would you want to put the cue ball to make the five? Give yourself a little bit of an angle. Little angle? Uh, Back a little bit. Back a little? Yeah, it's here. All right. All right. Now, if I hit a rolling high ball, it should hit the rail and come this direction, shouldn't it? And I do, I do want to get on the rail, do I? Because I want a little angle off the three so I can get to the eight. So a lot of pools about angles, isn't it? Now, another way I could do it, which is maybe a little bit simpler, I could put the cue ball right here, couldn't I? and hit a high ball so I only hit one rail and pops out. This way might even be a little bit better, don't you think? And the reason why it's a little better is because it's simpler. So I'm going to hit a high ball on the five, roll forward. And I got perfect because I got a little angle on the three. Now if I would have stuck on the rail here, that's a hard shot. But I hit it hard enough to get a little bit of angle. All right, now what do I do to go from the three to the eight? Should I just roll the ball in? Should I drive? What would you say? Drop. Drop. Absolutely. So in this case, I'm going to go through my whole pre-shot routine. Let the floor swing down. I've already visualized the shot. Draw the line all the way back. Swing down, take a few warm-up strokes. Stay down until you hear the ball at the back of the All right. All right, now we got up to the eight ball. Now what should I do with this? Obviously I'm going to make it in the corner pocket, but how should I hit the eight? A little low. A little low, okay. Now you notice the tangent line is about right here. But if I hit the ball high, I could come down pretty low on this. So I, I probably would either hit a little low or more in the middle, middle of the cue ball. Swing down. And the reason why I hit a little low is I didn't want the cue ball to get too close to the corner block. But that's the kind of things I'd like to do on the first day. All right, here's another 
I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. When you say the tangent line, is that the line perpendicular oh, to the pocket? I'm glad you yeah. asked that. Let me get my tangent line finder up. <laughs> All right, every shot that you shoot, except a straight-in shot, has a tangent line. Let's see how do I want to do this. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Right, you'll notice I have the arrow pointed to the center of the corner pocket. A lot of times when you have a cut shot like this, you'll notice I have a little sticker in the middle here. Well, that's my aim point on a cut shot. The contact point between the cue ball and the one is right here to make the one. Like if I'm shooting this shot, I'm looking behind the one seeing exactly where my contact point is. But that's not the point I aim at. The point I actually aim at to make a cut shot is the center of what we call a ghost ball, okay? So on this cut shot, the tangent line, who asked that question? Yeah, yeah, that's the tangent line. It's always a 90 degree line from the center of the pocket to here. Well, that's what you're doing just to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. With no, English. no English, right. Now, depending on the angle, the tangent line, like from here, I'm going to go on the tangent line no matter what. But here, I can alter the tangent line. Yeah. Now, for example, let's say I wanted to get shape on the 7. All right. Well, if I wanted to follow the tangent line, the cue ball hit here and come over here behind the 7. So all I have to do is hit a little bit of center ball stun. I hope it doesn't pop in the air. Probably will. Let me take that off. But you all understand what the tangent line is. Oftentimes that will, that's what we use to play the position. Now if I hit a rolling ball, it won't follow the tangent line. It'll go forward. And if I hit backspin, it's going to break over this side. But if I, if I hit a normal center ball stun shot, it will follow the tangent line perfectly. But like, for example, when you're playing position, like on a shot like this, I do notice where the tangent line is, because angle out, angle in, brings me to the proper position for the seventh ball. So you notice I've just hit a perfect center ball, you notice the cue ball rolls into the line of the shot. That's a real important shot because uh, when you're playing position, you want to know where your tangent line is. Like, here's another example of it. Thank you so much. If I'm cutting the seven in the corner pocket, my tangent line takes me to here. Angle, angle angle. So I can actually determine after a couple of rails exactly where the cue ball is going to go. Then I'll hit its center ball. No English. And that's exactly where I play it. So that's the way you learn how to control the cue ball, which is a huge part of the game. And we're going to get, talk about the tangent line a lot more. <laughs> okay. But that's, that's just kind of an introduction. Any other? Go ahead. I was talking to a couple of guys that play, and I didn't play with them, and I mentioned the English. Yeah. And they told me you don't do English. Well, yeah, we will. Uh, I mean, they said you basically draw and, and roll. All right, let me explain that. Most people in the league overuse English. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> Not only do they overuse it, but it must be sexy or something because they love to show it off too, right? You watch good players on, on YouTube and ESPN or whatever. They use little bits of English. You know what? They will use a lot of English when it's necessary, okay? But you need to learn the game 
by mastering the vertical axis of the cue ball first. Once you do that, then you can go on to English. And when I give private lessons, I'll have them, you know, maybe the first four or five lessons, I'm going to allow them to use English. Because you, you have to master the center ball first. And the reason why you do that is because English throws a lot of wrenches into the workings. And I'm just going to say one thing about it, and then we're going to ignore it for the, rest, for the next three classes, okay? When you use English, let's say, for example, uh, I hit right English. Now, the right English would be on the right side of the ball. And when I hit it with right English, you notice the cue ball is round, isn't it? So if I hit the right side of the ball, the cue ball deflects slightly to the left, doesn't it? Okay. Which makes it very difficult to pocket balls or to aim properly. Now, if I have a longer shot, and I use left or right English again, by the time it gets to the nine ball, it might start curving a little bit to the right because of the right spin on the ball. So English not only makes the cue ball deflect, but it also, after it goes a while and slows down, it'll actually curve a little to the right. So you've got all these variables to deal with when you're using English. So actually, when you learn to master English, you have to compensate for the deflection of the curve. That's all I want to say on that. But I'd like you to master when you get in class number five and six, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. Yeah. Now the three basic shots, you know I'm talking too much today, but three basic shots I want you to practice from here. Is number one, I want you to just stop it. Practicing your pre-shot routine. And that means stroking it just maybe a slightly below center. Notice how perfectly that stopped. But you do have to accelerate through to make it stop. The other shot I want you to practice is the rolling ball. And I'm actually going to ask you to try to scratch, okay? I want you to make the cue ball follow through and roll right into the pocket. That's easy. <laughs> it's not easy at all. You, have to try you don't, want, you don't want to do it. It's easy. Yeah. And again, pre-shot routine. See the line. Draw that line all the way back. Get your eyes in the proper position, left foot forward, swing down, warm-up strokes. And you'll notice that now I'm hitting the cue ball all the way at the top. Very difficult to make a straight because you have to hit it perfectly. Let's try that again. Target line. forward, swing down, keep the eye on the target. Close. Put, the anyway, eight ball up. Yeah. Put the eight ball up there, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, start. I know. Try the eight ball, that's right. All right, I want you to try those follow shots, and I'll come around and help you with these. One thing I notice when people try to follow the cue ball, make it go forward, they tend to do this, they elevate the back. Look at how it stops and slows down. To really learn how to make the cue ball go forward, you've got to level out your cue more, like this. And that way, you don't have to hit so hard and then it'll roll forward. Okay, notice how effortless that was? And the final shot I'd like you to practice when you get there is the backspin. <laughs> And draw is the, is the most challenging of all shots. It's the most complicated. And the reason why, why I say that is most people actually don't hit the cue ball low enough, so they have to really force the shot. I want to show you, I want you to learn how to draw the cue ball in this class so you're not forcing it or hitting it too hard. I just want you to notice how easy I hit this and, and it comes back. The reason why it comes back so easily is that I'm hitting it here. 
most people in the league I see try to draw shots from there. And that's almost like a stun because it's the top of your tip is hitting the center of the ball. Okay? But when you really get your cue tip down there and chalk your cue, I just want you to notice how easy it is to draw. The cue tip has to accelerate through and stay low. See, I hardly hit that. But you know what? I hit it lower and I went all the way through. That's the key to a draw shot. <coughs> and as we as we progress in the class, those are the three shots I want you to master. At. Oftentimes, when you when you when you cue real low, when it yeah, you pop it up in the air. Right, let me explain <coughs> that. The popping up in the air is is real common because at the last second you drop your elbow and you try to hit down lower like that. You want to keep the cue stick level and that won't happen. You drop your elbow? Yeah. Well, if you keep the cue stick level like this, when you accelerate through, it's going to stay low. The reason why you pop up like that is because you're ang angling down. You want to keep the cue stick as level as possible. See how that went? <laughs> and again, uh, Shocking is real important all the way around like this because on draw shots it's very easy to do that. Swing down, level Q, nice smooth acceleration. Don't try to force it. A stroke. a stroke is a lot different than a hit. A stroke is a release through the ball. A hit is like a tense jab and nothing happens, okay? All right, any questions about that? Try all three of those shots, the follow, the stop, and the draw. Okay, I'll be coming around helping you with that. Anything else before we break up? All right, uh, we've got a couple of bar tables, and we've got five tables open there. You can just choose whichever one you'd like. Get a partner. I'd like you to work together with a partner to help each other out. Stephanie, you can play me with uh, yeah. yeah. You said uh, yeah. hit and stroke. Does that say hit and stroke? Uh, stroke. Yeah. So at least there are kind of learn to a hit, or should you always be a stroke partner? Yeah, there is when you just punch okay. a ball, like, right a, like a punch shot, where you just want to stop. That's yeah. occasionally you can shoot like that. Okay, so it's legit. Yeah. Why would you think I was a contractor? Oh, yeah, let's get some mess. You said just you the school thing is telling us that we need to talk. <laughs> the, 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 the day before that, it said that the... All right, good. Tom? Tom, go ahead.